in the double displacement reaction of silver nitrate and sodium chloride, we have a solution of silver nitrate, which is colorless. We will add a solution of sodium chloride, which is also colorless. When the sodium chloride solution is added to the silver nitrate solution, a white precipitate, insoluble silver chloride is formed. In this video, we're going to identify and state chemical equations for double displacement reactions. So you just saw that in the video, and what really happened there was we took one compound and we added it to another compound, and what happened was really they sort of switched partners. Um, the A went with the C and created a new compound, and the B went with the D and created a new compound. So if we are looking to sort of identify this, um, basically we're looking for compound plus compound. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about this, but both compounds that we have in the reactants must be soluble in water. In other words, they must be able to be dissolved in water. So to show that, we write AQ. If it can't be dissolved in water, then we would leave it as solid because ionics are all solid. Now, when they react with each other, we're going to be looking for an ionic compound that is a solid. Now, that would signify a precipitate. That's what you just saw in the video when that white cloudy substance was made. That was a precipitate. So a precipitate is shown by a solid. And we have a couple, of, and it can be with another ionic compound that is soluble in water, or it can be both precipitates. So as long as we have one precipitate, the reaction will happen. If we have no precipitates, then it will not work. Another option sometimes is that we'll end up with an ionic compound that can either be solid as a precipitate or it can be soluble in water. Uh, and the other compound must then be a covalent compound. So these are the three options um, for what we're looking for in the products. To give an overall definition of a double displacement reaction, it's when we take two ionic compounds which switch ions to form either a covalent compound or a precipitate, shown by the solids. So let's try and do some prediction with these types of reactions. So there's three steps to this, and we're gonna do one example as we go through, or we're gonna do a few examples, but we'll do one example as we go through these, um, this list. So first we have to make sure that both reactants are soluble, and we're gonna use a chart to show that. And if they're not both soluble, then there's no reaction. So how do we tell if something is soluble in water? Well, this is called a solubility table and it's gonna help us determine that. So what we have to do first is we have to take a look at what the anion is. So um, we're trying to see if barium sulfate is soluble. So sulfate is our negative anion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look in our list of the anions, this column, until we find sulfate. Okay, now that we found sulfate, um, what we can see here is sulfate plus any of these will be insoluble. In other words, a precipitate. So we can see here that barium is in this list that is low solubility. So barium sulfate will be a solid. Silver nitrate, if we take a look at nitrate, nitrate plus anything is soluble. So that will be aqueous. So we can fill that in. Now, again, our first one says make sure both reactants are soluble. Since this one is not soluble, there's gonna be no reaction. So now we're just finished with that one. Now let's do another example. So copper sulfate plus barium nitrate. So we just learned that all nitrates are soluble, so that one will be AQ. Then let's see what happens when sulfur is with copper or sulfate is with copper. So sulfate, now we're looking here, copper is not in this list. So if it's not in that list, sulfate plus anything else is soluble. So copper sulfate is soluble, so we'll write that as AQ, and then the barium nitrate is aqueous. Okay, now we can try and see what will happen. 
The products are made by switching the partners and using crisscross because these are ionic. So we have to do a little bit of side calculation. So we're going to take the copper and we're going to and it's going to combine with the nitrate. So we put those both up here. The copper 2 plus comes from the periodic table and the nitrate comes from the um, polyatomic ion table at the top of the periodic table. Now we do our crisscross and we end up with copper nitrate with a 2. So that 2 went down there. And then we need to crisscross barium with sulfate. Barium is 2 plus, sulfate is SO4 2 negative. We crisscross those and we end up with BASO4. And now we have to look back at our solubility tables. Okay, One product, not produce, one product, better quickly change that, must be a precipitate or a covalent compound. Well, we can see in this example that none of them are going to be a covalent compound. They're both metal and nonmetal. Um, but now we have to see if one of these is a precipitate. Well, if we think back to here, barium sulfate, we already looked it up. It is not soluble, so this will be a solid. That tells us it's a precipitate. And copper two, nit or copper two nitrate here, remember, just we read that all nitrates are soluble, so this will be AQ. So as long as one is a precipitate, this reaction happened. Now it's uh, finished, and all we have to sort of do is balance it. So we can see one barium, one barium two nitrates, two nitrates, one copper, one copper, one sulfate, one sulfate. So it's already balanced. There's nothing we need to do there. All right, now let's do the next one. Um, sodium chloride. Well, that's salt. I already know from a common experience that salt is soluble in water, so I don't need to look at the table. Nitrates. We just learned all nitrates are soluble, so both of these are going to be aqueous. All right, so both reactants are soluble, so now we can think about switching the partners. So sodium will go with nitrate. So we have to write those up here and crisscross them to make sodium nitrate. And then barium is going to go with the chloride. So we put those up there and we crisscross. And we have BaCl2. And now we have to check the solubility. Well, here's another nitrate. All nitrates are soluble, so it will be AQ. And now we have chloride. Well, we've not looked at this one yet, so let's go back to our table. So chloride, all right. A chloride plus silver, lead, mercury, copper, and thallium will be a precipitate, insoluble. But anything else, it will be soluble. Well, since barium is in, falls under this any other cat cation category, it's soluble, so it's going to be AQ. So both of these are aqueous. Our rule says one product must be a precipitate or covalent compound. Well, neither of these are covalent either because both of them have a metal and a non-metal. So this reaction actually does not happen. So we just write an X over it, cross out what we did, and write no reaction. So sometimes you have to, you have to check twice to see if it'll happen. You have to check first with your reactants, and then you have to check with your products because things can go wrong at two places with double replacement reactions. All right, let's do one more example. Here we have sodium sulfide and hydrochloric acid. So take a look over here, sulfide, sulfide and sodium is soluble. Okay, so this will be AQ. And hydrochloric acid, let's see if that one is in here, uh, right here. Okay, here's our chloride. Hydrogen is not listed as a solute, as a precipitate, so it falls under any other cation, so they're both aqueous. So now we have to do our crisscrossing. Sodium is going to go with chloride and make NaCl. That's salt. Remember, we know salt will dissolve in water. And then the um, hydrogen is going to go with the sulfur. So we crisscross that one, H plus and S2 minus. And that's going to give us H2S. And this is now a covalent compound. So that, and it's also a gas. So this tells us that 
even though there was no precipitate made, we made a covalent compound, so this reaction does happen. Now that it does happen, we check our balancing, and we see we have two hydrogen here, but only one here, so we're gonna have to multiply that by two. Now we have two chlorides, so we have to put a two here, and now there's two sodium, and there was already two sodium, so now it's all balanced. So those are the examples for how to do double displacement reactions.